Well, this is the million dollar question that people have. It's like, how do I develop leaders? And so I think it's very multifaceted. And so because of that, we're gonna break down 10 things. It's not just one thing. There are a lot of different aspects of what you can be adjusting. And sometimes it's that 1% change, that 1% adjustment that you can make in these areas that can completely change the way that you develop and grow your team. Welcome to the Kingdom Minded Mompreneur, where we, Becky and Monique, your new biz besties, both busy moms just like you. We're here to talk all things network marketing, mom life, and how to truly live out your calling. We'll be dropping two episodes each week to help you, the busy mompreneur, know the exact strategies to build both your business and your home. You'll hear each week from one of the top network marketers on their best tips for what's led to their success and what's working now. We know that you're here because you are called to something more. You have a desire to succeed in both your business and at home, and we are going to teach you how. If you love what you hear here on the podcast and want to be one of our success stories, join us inside our community, The Kingdom Minded Mompreneur, where we provide a daily social media action plan additional resources, kingdom coaching, and more. Click the show notes for the link to join. So let's get into the episode. Hello, friends. We are so excited that you are tuning in to the Kingdom Minded Mompreneur today. We are going to talk about something that I think everyone wants to do more of, and that is developing leaders. But more or less, we're going to have a conversation around the reasons why you're not developing leaders. So Monique, I'm so excited to sit down with you today. We're going to be jumping in in just a second, but what are your first initial thoughts when you have, you're coaching someone and they're, they're struggling to develop leaders? Like what is your very first thought? Well, this is the million dollar question that people have is like, how do I develop leaders? And so I think it's very multifaceted. And so because of that, we're going to break down 10 things. It's not just one thing. There are a lot of different aspects of what you can be adjusting. And sometimes it's that 1% change, that 1% adjustment that you can make in these areas that can completely change the way that you develop and grow your team. Yes. Yeah. And so for that reason, we came up with 10 reasons you're not developing leaders. So we're just going to jump right in. The very first reason you are struggling to do this is that you're just not talking to enough people. I mean, let's just be honest, right? Like whether we like it or not, business in general, so much of the success is about numbers. It's about tracking the numbers. And it's not to say that you're equating people with numbers, but it's more or less that maybe you're just not talking to enough people, right? Like you don't have a system for tracking the conversations. You don't have a strategy behind who you're talking to, what you're saying to them, you know, why it is. You don't have people coming into your funnel in a sense, right? Coming onto your team to pull from when it is when it does come time to develop leaders. Well, and I think along with that, sometimes you might think that you are talking to a lot of people, but are you actually asking them about the business opportunity? Are you actually asking them to try your products? Because when you have connection conversations with people, those are important. They are vital. We're not saying like, just jump right in and, you know, do the ask for your business. You definitely want to have relational equity there, but conversations where you're connecting with people are not the same as the conversations where you are clearly asking someone, can I give you more information about my business? Is this something that I can share with you more information about? Here's why I think you'd be amazing on this team that I'm building. Are you open to hearing more about it? That's where you you can kind of count those as far as numbers go. That's where you can count those as the numbers that are going into the people that you're talking to, not just connection conversations. Yeah. And it's funny too, you talked about that because I can remember back in the day when I was in the field and, you know, I thought, right, like I was having all these conversations. I was talking to all these people and I was like, man, I don't understand, you know, why 
so-and-so, you know, in my company is recruiting all these people and I'm doing this exact same thing she is. And when I challenged myself to sit down and write out the names of the people that I was having a two-way conversation with about the business, by the end of the first month that I did that, it was like six names, right? And here I was thinking, I was talking to all these people, I was doing all this work when really maybe I was talking about it, but I wasn't specifically having conversations. And so, yeah, the, the time that I transitioned you know, that next month when I was like, okay, we're going to reevaluate this and I'm going to focus on, you know, making intentional connections, but then transitioning to asking about the business, it drastically went up, right? And so did my recruiting numbers. So yeah, you've got to be talking to a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. So that's your challenge is to start tracking, whether it's pen and paper, whether it's a Google sheet, whatever form that you use to keep track of names, Really challenge yourself to start evaluating how many people are you actually having two-way conversations with, and you will notice that on average, for every 10 conversations that you're having, you will most likely have one person who says yes. So number two is you don't have enough clarity on your own vision. So I always like to think of the analogy of driving a car. And if someone were to come up to you and ask you for a ride, and you were like, well, I don't really know where I'm headed. I don't know where I'm going. You know, they're, they're most likely not going to get into your car. And so <laughs> a lot of times people will be like, I don't understand why I'm not attracting leaders. I don't understand why I'm struggling to develop leaders onto my team. And so a question that you ask yourself is, do you even know where you're headed? Do you know where you are going? Because if you're struggling to know where you're headed, people follow leaders who know where they are headed. And so if it's really clear on this is the direction I'm going, this is what I want out of life, this is what I want out of my business, this is the kind of team that I'm developing, who's with me? Like if, you're, if your social media content is one that is very clear on what you are building, who you are looking for, who you're trying to attract on your team, those types of people are going to find you, those types of people are going to be attracted to your content and your, your mission because it's clear on where you're headed. Yeah. And it's just like that whole principle, like attracts like, and it's, you know, you walk into a room, like if you kind of take yourself back to high school and all the clicks, right? It's like anyone who was in band was hanging out with the people in the band. Anyone who was playing basketball or on a sports team, they were all hanging out together. The cheerleaders were together, you know, the art people were together. Like, it's like, you kind of, it's whether you like it or not, the very person that you are or who you become are the people that will be drawn to you. So it's, it's, you know, even in, on my own direct sales teams, right? Like I had a lot of teachers because I was a teacher and a stay at home mom and they could relate to me. And so I definitely think you have to have, yeah, you have to have clarity on where it is that you want to go, but you have to show up as that person too, right? Because then the, the people that will come to you are going to be attracted based on your current vision and where you're headed. Because, you know, I mean, when I was in the industry, it was like, you know, the first, when I first started, I was like, oh, I just want a thousand dollars a month. Right. And so I didn't have anybody that joined my team in the first like two years that was like, I want to be a millionaire or I want to get to the top of the company because I was not painting any kind of picture around you know, what this, the potential, you know, of the company was, or my, you know, the industry, I was just focused on, I need a thousand dollars a month. Right. And so because of that, the people that came on my team were people that just wanted a little side money, you know, and then when I transitioned the way I talked about my business and how I showed up and who I became, that is when those people came to me that said, Hey, I see what you're doing. I see what you've done and where you're going. And I think it's great. And I want to be a part of it. Right. That's just com two completely different ways to run your business. And it's not like there's anything wrong with it, but when you have a vision of something bigger, the people that are drawn to that are going to, they're going to come to you. They're going to show up, but you've got to put in the work. Okay. So number three, it, this, this one is like, ooh, I'm kind of like, ooh, kind of afraid to say it, but it needs to be said. Okay. So one of the reasons that you're not developing leaders is that you settle for low hanging fruit. 
I feel like I should be like, dun, 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 like noise effects, right? <laughs> like we don't, we don't have those yet, but it's like, seriously, guys, stop saying this phrase. You only have to do 150 in sales or you only have to do blah, blah, blah. Because here's what's gonna... lifestyle, sit yes. by the pool and don't yes. work. <laughs> right, exactly. Because it's like, if you paint this picture of like minimal effort, then that's all you're going to get. Seriously. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, and I feel like we also need to give a disclaimer here that this is, we're not saying that people are low hanging fruit, but there is a difference between the person who maybe your product goes on sale or your kit goes on sale, whatever people need to purchase to get into your company. And you know that there are those people that you can message and be like, Hey, this is on sale. Like now's the time join my team, you know? And they will join your team just because something is a discount versus the people who, if you think about your ideal team, and we've talked about this in previous podcast episodes, but your ideal business builders, this is something we teach inside of our multiply coaching program. We give you an exact strategy on how to look for your ideal business builders. But if you think about that kind of person and you really think about the qualities that you would want in your ideal team, it might be that somebody is driven and they're ambitious. And oftentimes they're already successful in another area of their life. And I also want to say that it's a lot of times the person who you are most intimidated to reach out to. If somebody is, you think of their name and you're automatically like, ooh, I'm kind of intimidated to reach out to them. They are the kind of person you need, you need on your team because they have their life together. They're already proven that they are successful in other areas. And so, you know, you were, I was thinking when you were talking, Becky, a second ago about, you know, when you were saying you just wanted to make $1,000 a month, you were not going to attract the person who is wanting to make a million dollars. And it reminded me of, there's a book, The Secrets of a Millionaire Mind. And it talks in that book about how every single person has a financial thermostat, something like this along these lines. And whatever your financial thermostat is, it's the setting at which your standards are at a certain place. And so if your standards are low, then that is what you're going to live up to. If you're like, I'm only going to make X amount, that's the standard that you will live up to. If you have really high standards, if you're lit, if your thermostat is high, then you're going to attract other people who will live up to that. And so if you look at certain people and you're like, man, they, you know, they joined network marketing and they attracted all these top leaders. It's because it was how they viewed themselves. Yeah. And so if you start viewing yourself in that way, you will attract other leveled up people. Yeah. Well, it also makes me think of, right. If you, I know this is kind of a silly comparison, but if you were to compare like shopping at dollar general and don't get me wrong, I shop at Do dollar general, but the quality of products, right. That you're getting there versus if you were to go to like, Target or, you know, somewhere a little more like upscale. I thought you were going to say Neiman Marcus. Target. I know, right? Like, but just in general, right? Yeah. It's like, or Pottery Barn or something. You yeah. Know, it's just like the quality is completely different. And it's like, yeah, you have to pay more. The standard is higher. Like the expectation of supply and demand, like, hey, you have to pay this amount if you want this quality it's greater. And so you have to look at the quality of people that you are looking for and how you show up as, you know, the person that you truly desire to join your team, right? It's like, you have got to stop focusing on scarcity and the minimums and instead focus on that quality leveled up person that you really want to build with you. Yes. Love that. All right. So the number four reason you're not developing leaders is you're not disciplined in your own personal habits. All right. Are we stepping on some toes today? Y'all are like, how do you know? Okay. We know that there are some of you that you're listening to this. And if you're being honest, and I'm going to speak for myself here too, you know, all of us, like every single one of us, if we look at our own life, there are areas that maybe you look at and you're like, wow, I'm really disciplined in these areas. And then there are other areas that are areas of growth that you look at and you, and you think to yourself, okay, I know that I can improve in my time management, or I know that I can improve in you know, following up with people or not letting certain things fall through the cracks or staying consistent on social media, whatever it is for you, look at your life and look at your business and ask yourself, what are the things that you need to start being more disciplined in 
Because if in the same way that we were just talking about that lid and that thermostat, like if you're not being disciplined in certain areas, how can you call your team to do the same? How can you ask your team to do something that you are not willing to do? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think we all can agree that, you know, the pace of the leader is the pace of the pack. And so it's like, you might be think disappointed in where you are in your business or disappointed in, you know, maybe your team didn't meet a milestone or like you have people that you you have so much faith in them and you're like, man, you know, this is, this is my next leader, blah, blah, blah. But the reality is right. Like you might need to be looking at yourself first before you can step into leadership development and helping other people grow. Because yeah, if you do not have discipline around your own business, then everyone that joins your team, just like we've had this conversation the whole time, like like attracts like, right? Like the people that join you are also going to struggle with discipline. Yeah. And I would even say with that, I would even say slow down to speed up. You know, I know like in our own business, we've had to do that, do that as well. You know, there are times where you look at something and you want to like run sprint ahead, but do you need to slow down to put systems in place, to get organized, to make sure that you have, you know, the back office support, whatever you need to do to slow down a little bit, get disciplined in those areas so that you can speed up and you can be bringing people onto your team and you're prepared. Like if you're, if you're like, I don't even know my onboarding system, I don't even know this, you know, and you're just bringing people onto your team, but you don't feel like you're prepared or you've been disciplined in certain areas, then pause and kind of recognize, all right, what are the things I need to start doing now? And then start recruiting those quality people. Yeah. So the fifth reason that you're not developing leaders is that you're dealing with your own personal issues. And so I want to have, you know, I want to be really delicate about what we say here because we definitely don't want anyone to think that we're dismissing their problems or we're saying, oh, just get over that. Or, you know, while there are, you know, seasons of our life, I think that's what's so beautiful about this industry is there are different seasons and and how your business can play a role in that season of support or also sometimes on the sideline. And that's okay. But I think recognizing that maybe you know, the success that you desire, there might be something going on in your personal life, whether it's, you know, health or in your marriage or, you know, just finances, you know, because every, what, everything that you do is going to filter through your own experience, your own problems, your own issues, right? Like it's going to act as a filter. And what I mean by that is, you know, whether you realize it or not, the way you show up as a leader, it's it's going to be filtered through trauma or filtered through hurt or filtered through pain or stress or whatever it might be. And so it might be right that you've heard us say this before, but it might be that like you need to go to therapy, right? Like I'm in therapy, Monique's in therapy, like our kids have gone, like we firmly believe that having exterior support, whether it's a coach or a therapist or, you know, a loved one could be a huge help. And I know, Monique, you probably have a little more, you, the therapist background and you probably has lots to say about this, but I just feel like for my own experience, I can even look back on times when I, you know, maybe like snapped at someone in my organization and I know, right, that behind the scenes, I was dealing with stuff like in my marriage, right? Like, or I know that I was dealing with stuff in, in my health or whatever, right? And so I just feel like it needs to be talked about because it's not really a a, a lovey, dovey, like happy, exciting, fluffy thing, but it's a re it's reality, right? It's real life. Yeah. So I have a funny story in this. Well, first... I just believe that every single person can benefit from going to therapy. So I don't know if you have ever considered this. I don't know if you've ever thought about it. It doesn't mean that you have quote unquote issues, but when you have a neutral person who is, you know, has a um, legal obligation to not repeat anything that you share, 
you know, it allows you to be fully, fully transparent because I think there's always, you know, whether it's your upline or a best friend or your mom or whatever, you know, like sharing things with other people, there's always that factor of, well, they might share some, you know, they might repeat what I said, or they might, might judge me or whatever it might be. But when you have a counselor, when you have a therapist who is legally obligated to, to not share whatever it is, it gives you space to be honest and it gives you space to unpack. And so I was saying, I have a funny story because it just reminded me when you said, you know, our kids go, I remember, so my children have been in therapy um, since they have been with us. And um, I remember one time one of my boys was playing with the neighbor and they were just talking and my son said something to the neighbor about, well, my therapist said, you know, blah, 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 something. And the neighbor was like, your therapist. And he was like, yeah, you don't have one. Like it was normal. <laughs> it was no It's normal in our household yeah. for everybody to go to counseling because yes. we, we all have, like, it's normal. And so it was just funny to me that he was saying to the little boy next door, like, oh, you don't have a therapist? Yeah. Anyway, but I think it just, a the point that I want to make with this is the same skills that are required for you to get to the top, meaning the ability to hear people say no, the ability to quote unquote, get rejected, the ability to um, overcome issues as you are leading people, all of these skills that are needed, the very same skills that the people at the top have to work through are the same skills that you are able to unpack in therapy. Like you may not think that it has anything to do with you know, why am I stunted in my business? Why am I not growing? Why am I not, you know, getting to the top? Well, probably because you haven't unpacked rejection from your past, probably because you have traumas that keep you from getting close to people, probably because maybe you had betrayal in your life and you're afraid of, you know, helping onboard somebody and then they might quit, you know, whatever it is, right? Like you may not even recognize what those things are, but when you're able to do that deep work and get honest with yourself and honest with somebody else, that is one of the things that is going to propel you in your business. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, totally agree. <laughs> totally agree. Because it's like people operate very often through the lens of pain or purpose, right? And we want to operate out of purpose. You don't want to operate your business. I mean, yes, while I know the struggle of being at the grocery store and not, you know, my card declining or whatever, right? Like I've been there, you know, I know the struggle of stress in a marriage and it taking a toll on every aspect of my life. I really do get that. And so I'm not dismissing, like, don't, you know, we're not saying like, just sit down, go deal with your stuff and Stop don't show and up don't. and do the work. But what we are saying is that, you know, beauty and growth is going to come when you operate out of purpose, right? And it's people are going to be drawn to that. People are sad and have empathy and compassion when it comes to pain. But the the quality of people that you want are not drawn to pain. They are drawn to purpose. And so if that is something that you're struggling with, we're going to put the link for our course, Multiply 2.0, uh, Monique is actually going to be running a cohort coming up uh, in a couple of weeks. And we are so excited about it because this is, first of all, the value that you get is incredible, but it's really designed to help you find those leveled up people, the people that see the vision, right? We teach you this invitation, quote unquote, process for inviting people to join the business and build with you. And, you know, the the success of our clients that have gone through this program is insane. It is so exciting. And I know you're dying to know the rest of the reasons for why you're not developing leaders. So you're gonna have to tune in next week for part two, but just know that we believe you are listening to this podcast for a reason. We believe that you are, you know, God has aligned things so that you are building not only, you know, treasures on earth and a business and, you know, changing lives here on earth, but also in heaven. And we want you to feel equipped to do that and have the confidence. So thank you for tuning in and we will see you next week for part two. Thanks so much for listening to the Kingdom Minded Mompreneur. If you loved what you heard today, could you stop and give us a five-star rating and review? It helps our visibility on podcasting platforms 
so others like you can hear more of this message. Also, if this episode encouraged you, we would love for you to pass it along to your own biz bestie and anyone else who could benefit. Lastly, don't forget that if you want to hang out with us just a little bit more, join us inside the Kingdom-Minded Mompreneur community. Click the link in the show notes. Bye for now.